You know, going into this project and choosing Louis L'Amour books to read, I had no idea he was that good at creating action and conflict in his stories. What's up guys, welcome back to Unlimited Reads. My name is Chris and today I'll be officially wrapping up Michael K. Bourne's June on the Range reading project and I'll also be giving my spoiler-free review of The Warrior's Path by Louis L'Amour, the third book in the Sackett Family Saga, published in 1980. I had a great time with this one and can't wait to read more of these books as time goes on. But as always, I like to always start with what the book is about and I'll read to you the blurb. The Warrior's Path is the story of backwoodsman Kin Sackett, one of Barnabas Sackett's four sons, who is called upon to help save two girls who disappear while walking in the woods. Kin soon discovers that although Indians have been blamed for the abduction of the girls, it is actually a plot by very powerful individuals to capture the white girls that are disliked in their communities and sell them as slaves overseas. Now, the book mainly focuses on Kin Sackett, who is driven to bring justice to those responsible for the disappearances of the local maidens from the colonies. Now, he doesn't believe for a second that the Indians were responsible, and he starts off on his own quest to get to the bottom of what is going on. Now, his investigation takes him all the way uh, to Port Royal in Jamaica, which was a, a refreshing location change, uh, filled with interesting characters as well. You could be stabbed in a bar where um, people wouldn't even look at you twice, they'd just walk over your body. It is such a lawless city where anything can happen and people can get away with anything. It drew some parallels to me with the Moss Eisley uh, spaceport in Star Wars, had all sorts of unsavory characters and uh, you could uh, die and you know be killed and get forgotten about very, very quickly. But um, what he has to do, the recent girls that got kidnapped, there's another girl that got kidnapped uh, a year before and he has to find her in order to get her testimony to deliver to a local judge or magistrate to prove of what is going on and to bring those conspirators to justice. Now obviously the people who have kidnapped the girls don't really like that very much. They don't want to be found out and uh, it's just absolutely full of action and intrigue. Um, it's it's got so much conflict, it is ridiculous. Louis L'Amour is so good at writing action scenes and uh, you're on the edge of your seat the whole time. I found this one brilliant as we got to know uh, Yance and Kin a little bit better and uh, obviously jam-packed with nail-biting action. I really enjoyed it and hope that um, in the future books we get to catch up with uh, other family members who we haven't um, seen uh, in ages. We hopefully might get to catch up with uh, young Brian, the youngest brother, and Noelle, the young, the, the only daughter of Barnabas Sackett, and uh, Barnabas's wife, who uh, they all reside in England at the moment, and uh, wouldn't mind seeing uh, what is going on with them, but I'm not sure whether they get featured in future books or not, but uh, that'll be remain to be seen. So overall, I really enjoyed uh, the project, even though I only read three books, which was um, uh, Sackett's Land and To the Far Blue Mountains before reading The Warrior's Path. The second half of June was absolutely crazy. I had so much on my plate, so much going on that my reading dropped pretty dramatically as a result. But look, I won't stop reading the Sackett books. I think they're brilliant. I'll uh, hopefully get through the whole lot of them over the coming year. Uh, they're just so well written and uh, they can be relied upon for being good because I have had a pretty good taste of Louis L'Amour's fiction, so much so that uh, I'm looking forward to reading a lot more of his stuff. And uh, it's, it's just very accessible and easy to read and digest. There's no uh, dense uh, descriptions or anything in the books. Uh, he gets straight to the point. He moves the story along. It's all about how the characters drive the story. They're not plot-driven stories and um, you develop a really good rapport with these characters. 
So uh, yeah, I would like to thank Michael K. Vaughan for allowing me to participate in the project. I enjoyed watching what others had read during the project as well, the other hosts. So thank you to all of them and uh, look forward to doing June on the Range next year. And hopefully I'll get to read uh, a few more books next year for the project because um, it is a very, very popular project created by Michael. Uh, hats off to him. He's done really well with the project and uh, it has de it's developed a lot loyal following uh, along the uh, you know in the booktube community so there you go thank you very much for watching please don't forget to like and subscribe offer up any comments below i'll always respond to that coming up on the channel this week i'm very very excited to be sharing with you something a little bit different which is uh, non-book related i love books but i also love movies as well and uh, this doesn't happen very often, but it, it's because I'm so excited about a movie coming out next week uh, that I have to share this with you. So I will be talking about Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, Part 1, the latest installment in my favourite movie franchise of all time. I'll be revealing my thoughts and theories and predictions on what I hope the film will deliver and what I think might happen and uh, get some serious questions answered. But... Uh, you know, one thing I want to talk about is that jump, uh, which uh, has got everyone buzzing and um, it is my most highly anticipated movie this year. Can't wait to share it with you all. So until that video, guys, which is coming very, very soon, it'll be out midweek. Um, yeah, thanks for watching again and I'll see you later.